Rihanna is back in a heated studio for the first time in three days. You were out in the teeth of it all weekend. What was it like? Well, Governor Christie was right to declare a state of emergency. He was right to tell people to stay off the roads. As we were driving through, we started off in Ocean County in Manahawkin and made our way up the coast, and we saw uh, motorists stranded. I think all total, the state police said that they had responded to about 1,500 calls for aid and somewhere around 300 accidents. So you really had two stories here. You had these severe high winds, the inland heavy amounts of snow uh, upwards to three feet and then along the coast you had the flooding you had uh, these dunes and the erosion uh, you had seawalls where water was uh, flooding right over top so we had two stories that we were looking at the winds made everything really difficult uh, for folks to maintain because as soon as the roads were plowed, those 50 mile an hour wind gusts were coming, blowing everything right back. Anyone who was trying to get out in a vehicle or even just walk against 50 mile an hour winds, you can imagine, is really tough. Uh, so uh, there were definitely uh, some safety measures that needed to be taken. You also have to consider heavy wet snow on these trees and power lines. We saw quite a few trees down, you know, dangling power lines. And, and that can be dangerous, especially if folks are trying to get out in their cars, and they were. Uh, there's been some backlash from the locals to Christie's response. What were you hearing? We had sort of this um, rise of Christie through the weekend. So initially he was in New Hampshire saying, I'll come home if it warrants it, if it's bad enough. We know Friday he rushed home. Uh, he said, I'm here. We're, we're here to take charge. This is my 17th snow emergency or winter emergency in six years. And uh, then as he held a press briefing on Saturday with, with members of the press, he was talking about mild to moderate flooding and uh, referencing the southern part of the state, Cape May and Atlanta County, uh, saying that they had some of the more severe street flooding. But folks I spoke with down there, as we heard, were really quite upset. That doesn't sit well. When you're sitting in your living room and you're looking out your front window and you see five feet of water rising up to your doorstep and no one's told you to evacuate and you don't know if you're going to be able to, hearing the governor of your state talk about it as moderate flooding, it doesn't sit well. Very quickly, any surprises? Uh, you know, there were, of course, um, folks who made light of the situation. Uh, we had someone who was wind sledding. We saw a Sweet 16 walking down the street, uh, a party Sweet 16, and, and even a, a snowman, the height of a, the first floor of a house. Thanks Pretty for cute. your hard work, Brian. Thanks, Mary Alice. The storm socking the eastern seaboard was so vast, it took a special person to get a good shot of it. That tops tonight's Garden State Express. Our first stop, Orange, where homeboy and our personal eye in the sky, astronaut Scott Kelly sent this spectacular image from aboard the International Space Station. Kelly's coming to the end of a record-breaking year in space, during which he's conducted scientific experiments and perfected space-age photography. The reason you can't see the nearly 9 million New Jersey residents smiling for his camera is because the enormous mass of rough weather eclipsed us all. Next to Westfield, where the snow cover at Trader Joe's was weighty enough to collapse the roof. And that's not all. Three of its four walls buckled. At 2 o'clock in the afternoon, in a store with 160 employees, that might have been a human tragedy. But management had declared a snow day just before noon and sent everyone home. So no one was injured, but those employees might be working in distant Trader Joe's until this one's restored. Finally, Belmar and an object lesson in making the most of a blizzard situation. Our NJTV news team found Brody Smith on the Belmar boardwalk. We're going to presume the 17-year-old had already put in a rigorous morning shoveling out his parents' home, maybe helping the neighbors, before he grabbed his boogie board and a plastic tarp and caught both wind and wave in perfect symmetry, demonstrating another great Jersey invention. Wind sledding is the new extreme sport. And that's our Garden State Express for Monday, January 25th. Something up in your town? Tip us off.
With snowfall totals in the state's largest city flirting with an all-time record, the storm cleanup plan in Newark turned to a public-private partnership, the city asking business owners to pitch in alongside Public Works employees. How did it work out? David Cruz reports. We were settling for a snowstorm and we got hit with a blizzard. Public Safety Director Anthony Ambrose and Mayor Rasbaraka looked like weary prize fighters who had been taking it on the chin for 48 hours. At the city's command center, they worked overtime to try to recover from 28 inches of snow when they were expecting half that. The mayor said Newark had to endure what most other major cities along the Northeast were experiencing. We had 280 uh, traffic weather-related uh, incidents, people stranded, uh, car fires, uh, which caused our fire trucks to go out, and they, they in two got stuck, and uh, some police cars were stuck as well. So we had to change operations to begin move all of those people. Uh, so we really was doing emergency kind of response for Saturday for the most part. Uh, then we had to resume back to our our normal plowing schedule, uh, which slowed us down. The mayor said city plows were overwhelmed by the amount of snow, leading them to rely on dump trucks and front loaders, which slowed things down even further. Faced with a shortage of private contractors, the city called out to residents and business owners for help. It's number one to the city now, that's private. Baraka said most major arteries were clear this morning, but Market Street downtown looked like this through most of the day. Residents, as you might expect, were apoplectic. On social media, where the hashtag Side Streets Matter was spreading, the mayor called for patience. The comments on his post were unforgiving and relentless. I have never ever seen such poorly clean streets in my entire life. You should jump in the snow and hide your head in embarrassment with just a rare show of support. Could more be done? Maybe, but it's been years since we had a storm of this magnitude. Be patient. On the streets today, it wasn't much better. They're doing a horrible job, horrible job. The people don't have nowhere to put the snow. So basically they have to like either throw the snow, snow back on the sidewalk or throw it back in the street and they're not coming back and re-plowing the streets. It's the worst ever, like, ever. Like, I've been living in Newark all my life and it's the worst I ever saw the snow on blocks. I never saw it like that, ever. Even in 95, when that big snowstorm hit, this is clean. And these people have to go to work. They have to feed their families. So he needs to do more plowing. They need to be out here 24-7. It's ridiculous. We just need a new mayor. It was enough to make some residents remember the good old days. We got a, a major uh, a snow plow here stuck. They're urgently needed on streets throughout the city. Ras Baraka is not the first mayor to face criticism for his response to a weather crisis. While there may be time to clean up the political mess that this has all caused, the mayor still has a more immediate mess to handle. In Newark, I'm David Cruz, NJTV News.